you know, it's ages since I've cooked outdoors. I mean, the last time I can remember was somewhere in Cornwall on a, a windy promontory somewhere where everything blew off the table. And I think that was the last day. We just thought, never again. But obviously this is a bit different and, and paellas or rice dishes like paella designed to be cooked outdoors. And this one, a very simple rice dish resembling a paella, but my take on it, just with monkfish, a bit of saffron and some red peppers. So first of all, I'm just gonna cook the monkfish to color it up. Well, I'm not using orange wood because knowing me, I'd probably set fire to the whole valley. But the Spanish use these special portable paella cookers and they work a treat. Monkfish is great for this dish because as the Spanish say, it's duro, hard or firm. I've sprinkled them with pimenton, great for colour, even better for flavour. I'm just going to sear them on both sides and in just a minute or so they turn a saffrony gold, very appetising. That's the moment I take them out and start to cook the real point of this dish, and that's rice. But first, chop shallots and garlic. I was going to make a paella, but after seeing all those experts making the true paella of Valencia, I thought of this. I add some more pimenton and also some chili flakes for just a bit of heat. Now tomato. I'm taking my time over doing this little phase because I'm trying to get a bit of a crust on the bottom. It's called in Spanish socorra, and it's a sign of a good paella. This isn't a paella, it's a sort of paella without the fancy bits, but what I really like in a paella is the rice and the pim pimenton and the saffron. So it's really all about that with a little bit of monkfish and a few roasted red peppers. I poured in some fish stock there I made it with the bones and the head of the monkfish. Now for the rice, and this is the most popular one. It goes by the name of bomba. The grains swell up and really hold the flavour of the stock without going creamy and breaking up like a risotto rice. Well, I've just added saffron powder there. Now, I think saffron powder is a mixture of saffron and just some food colour, natural food colour. And I've picked up this tip really that you don't use complete saffron because it's too strong. You don't want to use all saffron because it gets sort of medicinal in its flavour. So a bit of, of yellow colour is fine. Now slices of roasted and skinned red peppers. They're really sweet and you can get them in tins. It's funny but everything I seem to cook over here is the colours of the Spanish flag. I mean you've got yellow everywhere in saffron, you've got red of pimenton, you've got red of peppers, you've got red of tomatoes, yellow and red everywhere. But it seems to match, don't you think? This is the moment the rice starts to work its magic and swell up. A Spanish lady once said to me that when the rice has had a good drink, he needs to sleep in the oven, and only then should he come out to the table. Well, this rice is nearly ready and it's time for the fish to go back in while there's still a bit more of the stock left for the rice to drink. Interestingly, and I think this is really important, the Spanish say you never eat paella at night. And for me, it's not an evening dish, it's too filling. It's something you really look forward to at lunchtime with maybe a glass of cold red wine. So, it's just about there. Now I'm just gonna turn the heat off and cover it for about five minutes. Just make sure that rice is really nice and dry. So there we are, the moment of truth. I know it's going to be good because I can hear the sticky sound of the rice coming from the bottom of the pan. I've never cooked it before, but I'll definitely be cooking it again. I add a bit of creamy and very garlicky alioli, which goes so well with the rice. Yep, this will be in my top 10.